Well, welcome to um, a fun-filled episode of Salty Laughs. And the freezing episode of Salty Laughs. And this week we have got some guests aboard. Hooray! Hi there, it's Owen from Sailing Lady G. Sporting the worst case of lockdown hair in the world. Shh, don't tell anyone. Right, Skipper James here. And, and this, this is SV Pavidus. Ahoy, salty lasses. This is Jamie from Follow the Boat. This week we're going to be talking about Automatic Identification System, or AIS. And you will have seen us fit one in a couple of episodes ago. And what it is, is a way of picking up marine traffic around you. Now, we've got a number of guests who have contributed to this week's episode, and they're going to be telling you about the AIS systems they've fitted, and what they use them for, and whether or not they think it's worth the money. Well, we're going to start with Owen on Lady G, a boat we have a little soft spot for. And um, he's going to tell you exactly how AIS works and why he chose the digital yacht solution. Hi folks, it's Owen here from Sailing Lady G. And here's some thoughts on why we chose this particular solution for our AIS. There were three factors at the time, networking, capability and cost. But first, let's have a very, very quick overview. This is a Class B AIS transponder. So what that means is it sends and receives AIS packets of data. This for us was really important because we wanted to be seen and to see other boats. Refitting all the electronics on Lady G gave us the opportunity to start thinking about how we could network devices together. As a result, this transponder allows us to send AIS data around the boat making it very, very easy for me to be able to plug in different devices to do what I want to do with. Also, not to mention, it's a very, very simple install. Because the power for the transponder is fed directly from the NMEA 2K network, which also powers other devices. Simple. We liked the internal GPS unit inside this transponder, and coupled with the package stub antenna from Cactus, we didn't need a splitter. And that saved us about 240 to 250 pounds on the entire price. It took a little bit of work to install a little antenna at the back of the boat, but we think that's worth it and we've not noticed any loss of reception. It was, quite frankly, ridiculously easy to fit. Just one wire was all it took to connect it to our network, switch on the chart plotter, and immediately we had AIS targets. It's clear that most transponders in this price range are pretty much technically very similar to each other. They send and receive AIS data. That's it. So why settle for this particular transponder? Well, we already had digital yacht devices on the boat and we wanted NEMA 2K. So this satisfied both of those requirements. Now, there are two types of AIS. There is the transponder, which broadcasts your position as well as listening for other people's. And there is the receiver. Skipper James... Uh, went for the receiver option and he's going to tell you why. Right, Skipper James here and this is the NASA AS, AAS receiver that I use on board just because. So why just a receiver? Well basically for me personally it was so nobody can actually track where I am all the time. Now everybody will have their different reasons but that was one of my reasons. The main reason is here was the price of it. It's a really good price. Secondly, it's a standalone unit. Which, to me, if things go wrong, it's easily narrowed down. Uh, I've used this this AS system in, in some pretty extreme conditions. Like going out to the furrows and stuff, we had really, really heavy fog. I've used it in lots of fog, and, and it's spot on. The range on it, I'm getting up to 16 nautical miles with ease, and everything's coming up fast. I have this connected to a separate antenna on the back rail. And the reason I have it, a separate antenna on the back rail. If anything goes goes wrong up in the top of the mast, then it's, it's just a wee bit harder to fix. Plus, I could actually use that for an emergency antenna for my VHF. And thirdly, it's because the price of a splitter, 
it's, it just doesn't make sense when, when I can get this sort of setup for like 30 quid. So that's what I use, the NASA AAS uh, radar. It's simple to use, simple to install, and it's a standalone unit. And in my eyes, it's, it's a pretty, pretty good bit of kit. Two of our other guests have both radar and AIS aboard and they've used both systems and they've come to conclusions about what suits them. So we're going to start by handing you over to Anton Sid on Impavidus and they will tell you what they think about AIS versus radar. And then we've got Jamie from Follow the Boat who has done the same sort of thing and they even have an extra and we will put a link to that in explaining in great detail about AIS and radar but Jamie will give you his thoughts here and if you're interested you can pop over to his channel and have a look. There will be links to all the other channels down below in the description so if you want to go and see them or their other bits and bobs just follow them in the links below and you know we encourage you to go and have a look. So without any further ado we're going to move on to Anton Sid and then Jamie on Follow the Boat. Hi there. Hi. She said and this is Anne. And this, this is SV Impavidus. We've been asked to comment or give our thoughts on radar versus AIS. Mm, big question. But here's our thoughts. This is our Sea Tracer, Class B AIS transponder, so it transmits and receives. It has a range of about 12 miles as the aerial is on our pulpit. Our VHF Marine Radio, which is a Garmin 300 AIS, also receives AIS signals and that has a range of about 50 miles as the aerial is at the top of our mast. Now remember, AIS is transmitted on VHF or FM and therefore it's only line of sight. So the higher up your aerial, the further away you're going to be seen or you can see. Our um, Garmin GPS map 820 which is our chart plotter and at the moment we have just the AIS switched on and you can see here uh, there's a British AIS number we know that's TC its name will come up in a second if I go to the menu um, where are we uh, go to the menu other vessels AIS list and you can see that's TZ there, its name will come up in a minute. Uh, that's the American warship, and it gives you distances in nautical miles that they are away from us, and uh, also their bearing uh, and their speed. Now, what we can do, um, if I go back again, is I can bring the cursor over the top of any vessel. There we go. So, signal status, their speed, uh, the closest point of approach is 60 metres. Even though neither of us are moving, he's about 60 metres away from us. So, and actually, this unit is integrated with our radio, so we could give him a, um, a, a, D8, a DSS call just by pushing the button. Let's show you the radar. Go back home, radar, radar overlay. So we've still got our AIS showing, but there is a lot more detail with the radar as to what's happening around us because obviously the signal is bouncing off of things and any vessel that hasn't got radar will actually show up on here so I'll give you a, a for example these yellow boys here actually have a steel floating pontoons around them and a fence on top. Now the other thing to say is that you'll only receive an AIS signal if the boat is transmitting or if they have a transmitter. Many vessels don't have AIS and some even switch them off like military vessels. 
And of course, radar and AIS are no substitute for a good lookout. And so, to summarise, AIS is good. But radar's better. Sail safe. safe! Ahoy, salty lasses. This is Jamie from Follow the Boat. And you've asked me to talk just briefly about AIS. Now, as you know, Liz and I put together an, what we call an extra, where we discuss specific topics. And we published this last year on the subject of AIS, uh, but it was within the context of radar versus AIS. Which one should you go for? It was a bit of a misleading question because really, in our opinion, radar is far more useful and more important than AIS is. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, the, the main one being, of course, is that radar will tell you exactly what you can see straight ahead of you, well, all around you, in fact. Uh, it might not pick up things like small wooden fishing boats and it might not pick up buoys and perhaps sometimes in bad weather there's so much chaos on the screen it won't pick that up either but it should on the whole as a rule pick up everything uh, with AIS of course you are relying on other people to have it installed for you to be able to see them um, but the upshot of that uh, discussion that we had was that really in an ideal world you should have both if you can afford it. If you can only afford one system, then I would definitely go for radar. But having both systems on board is the best of both worlds, especially if you have an integrated system where you can have both radar overlay on your screen as well as AIS targets. And I think as more and more people uh, put AIS on their boats, this is going to become much more practical to have both of these options. Um, of course, the advantage of AIS over radar is that you get a lot more detail. You can uh, get a sense of their course over ground, their direction, um, and of course, it will also tell you uh, your proximity to each other and how close you are to a collision. Um, so that gives you that extra bit of information. But I think the problem with AIS that we must not fall into is the trap of relying solely on that as your means of navigation. Uh, like anything on the boat, I think that you take all the information that you can, uh, whether that's radar data, using the VHF, satellite data, as well as your charts and the AIS. And a combination of all these systems is what arms you best uh, for tackling some potentially hazardous passages. So those are my thoughts on radar and AIS. I hope you found that useful. What else can I say other than peace and fair winds? I can't believe I just did that. We bought the M-Track B100 AIS transponder. So we broadcast our position as well as listening for other people's positions. Um, the unit can be turned on or off as appropriate. If we don't want it on, we don't have to turn it on. It also has what we call a stealth mode switch, which we can turn the transmitter off and just listen for AIS signals. So if we don't want to broadcast our position for some reason or other, we can just click the switch. It's that simple. The advantage of the M-Track was cost. It was not a very expensive unit. Um, it came with the GPS aerial. It did not come with the VHF aerial. We had to buy that separately, but that was not expensive. We got one cost, I think it was about 80 pounds. Yeah. And we've mounted it up on the, um, the arch where it gets good coverage. But the nice thing about the M-Track was it fitted in with our existing boat network. And as Gaynor says, it enabled all the information from the AIS unit to be broadcast to the chart plotter up here and the chart plotter down below. So no matter where we are, we can find out information about vessels around us and we can contact them because by touching them on the display, it gives us their contact details and we can just pick up the radio and have a chat. Well, here on the Salty Lass, um, we went for a AIS solution that uh, receives and transmits. And um, the reason that we wanted to have AIS on board was um, we sail in areas of high traffic, commercial traffic. We are currently in Belfast Lock and there are car ferries going up and down Belfast Lock all the time. <laughs> Another 
place that we sail and is Liverpool and it's the third? I think it's the third busiest port in Britain for commercial traffic. We've had confusion going in and out of the Mersey and things like that because the channel is particularly narrow and at night there is a lot of lights both on the shore, buoyage and traffic moving around and it can be very difficult to sort out one from the other. So for us, identifying ourselves to commercial traffic as well as having their courses plotted for us is a huge advantage. And you know, you can work these things out with radar and things, but one thing radar doesn't give you is the names of the vessels approaching you. So we have that in the display in front of us. It's very easy to pick up the radio and talk to them. Yeah, the other reason that we wanted uh, to be able to tell people our position was because there's been a couple of times that we have got into difficulties. Like, for instance, when we were going round Chicken Rock, um, I was having to report the position of Salty Lass every 15 minutes because we were in horrendous seas. If I'd have been able to tell the Coast Guard where we were by AIS, that would have just given us a lot more peace of mind. If they know our course and our track and our precise location where we are, they've got huge resources. I mean, they've got computer systems, they've got information, they've got people in nice warm offices who aren't standing on a after deck helming a yacht in slightly mild panic so they can take more rational decisions more clear-headed decisions perhaps and offer advice to us over the radio to say we can see where you're going we can see your track you'd be better going this way than that way or there is a shelter in this position um, they, they have that sort of information available to them simply because we're broadcasting to them so that is another advantage that AIS would offer in that particular situation the AIS uh, solutions in this video are not the only solutions. Um, you can also get an app for your phone. And um, one of our friends um, had a good long conversation with Beverly about that app. And she's going to tell you all about it now. Okay, so the app ran on his phone and I think there are several you can pick from and I don't know exactly which one he used. He went round Britain in a small boat and he used the app to broadcast his position. Now it's a phone app so it works through the phone network. It does not work on marine frequencies so the upshot of this is that our boat's AIS wouldn't see him because he's not broadcasting a marine AIS signal. What he is doing is updating through the internet into services like marine traffic. And so he said, it's a great way for your mates to know when you're coming into port and you can meet them in the pub. Um, it does have its downsides. Uh, in one particular one, a friend of his phoned him up to say, why have you moved the boat? And he said, I haven't moved the boat. I'm in a curry house. He hadn't turned it off. It was that simple. And that leads to another little point that we've come across recently, doesn't it? Of a mysterious boat that's wandering around. Yes. Some people talk about radar ghosts, strange reflections of things that don't seem to be there, but radar picks them up. Um, it might be atmospherics, who knows? But we've got an AIS ghost. Yeah, now what we think is um, that it's one of these apps, because we happen to know that this particular boat is somewhere in the France. Um, and it could well be that uh, there's somebody who's crewed on the boat, who's got an app, and if he wants to see what's on marine traffic when he's on on a ferry or something like that he fires up the app and then his phone starts broadcasting the boat's ids and um, so it looks like this boat which we know is in hard standing somewhere in france it's cruising up and down belfast lock twice a week and there's been quite a few local sailors thinking during the lockdown oh what's a yacht doing out in the lock and you look over the seawall and there's nothing there it's the ghost boat of Belfast Lock. It is the J Celeste. It floats up and down and no one ever sees it. <laughs> As I say, we think it could be the app, but we haven't really um, sussed it out. But if we do find out exactly what it is, then we will... Um, we will let you know. We will let you know. But um... So hopefully all this will be of some use to you if you're looking at AIS or radar and struggling to decide what it is you want. We understand the struggle because we went through it too. If you have any additional questions that we haven't touched on, do get in contact with us or if there's something relevant in one of the other channels that they've said, by all means contact them. I'm sure they'll be happy to answer your questions, as will we. So like we say, good luck with your choice if that's the sort of thing you're going for and let us know how it works out. Yeah. 
So that just about wraps this up and um, safe winds and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so safe. Uh, yeah, and since Jamie was getting in the mood, we'll just say, live long and prosper. 